Well, if we have some time, if we manage to save some time on my presentation, and I will try to do my best, in fact, because I believe that probably this is not so important to repeat many of the aspects that has already been mentioned before. But nevertheless, maybe something could be reasonable to mention once again. Why? Because we, very frequently, when we get together at our conferences, we in fact show somebody's experience. We always say that, well, somebody was working, but we didn't do it, we didn't handle it. But uh, in case with immune oncology, it's not always so. It's not always so. At least we, and I mean institution, Petrov Institution, Oncology Institution in St. Petersburg, and specifically Department of uh, Drug Treatment of Tumors and uh, uh, Oncology Scientific Center, we are actively working in different programs, in different trials, first of all, um, uh, with melanoma, and not only, and not only. You, we, and we have particular position, experience, and particular understanding. And what is very important, it's important for our internal audience, because, thank goodness, very recently, we registered epilimumab in Russia. Uh, that may mean that uh, very soon it would come to the hands of oncologists in different parts of the country. And by the way, by the way, about this page, specifically about this page, I would add Mechnikov here, Ilya Mechnikov, who in 1902 or 1904 already got Nobel Prize for the discovery of phagocytosis. And as far as we understand, phagocytes are predecessors of disease, these dendritic cells. And today, dendritic cells, they play a really huge role in this scenario. And definitely, we can speak up that melanoma itself always used to be the beloved disease of oncologists who were uh, loving different immunological approaches because there were some mm, cases when melanoma can show such interesting factors of partial and sometimes complete regression. That's why for many years, for many years, it has been under the focus of the attention. And I think it was the very first model which was used to rehearse, to try different immunological approaches. And in fact, currently, there are two of them, two scenarios. Uh, left one, the one is on the left, let's say, to make free lymphocytes, to take away coughs, to take all the restrictions. And the right scenario is to save life of lymphocyte, because very frequently, lymphocyte is in a bad environment, and that environment influences threatening for its life. So actually, these two scenarios are implemented very effectively, both of them. And I think this slide should be commented as well. And this is very obvious and very clear from the previous brilliant presentation of Alexander Egermont. Immuno-oncology becomes a universal method of uh, cancer treatment. If we used to ask a question before to our scientists, to clinicians, can we, can we invent a drug, just one drug from cancer, for all types of cancer? So majority of answers said, no, no, because each type of cancer has its own history, its own origin and mechanism. But uh, with the uh, discovery of immuno-oncological drugs, now we totally change the paradigm about the options of cancer treatment. And it appears to be that uh, non-anti-tumor molecules by, by the nature can give universal anti-cancer, comprehensive response. That's the interest to the immuno-oncology now, per se. Speaking about epilimumab, yes, maybe this is not the brightest beginning from the very beginning, but already in early publications, we could see that the median of response was much longer versus chemotherapy. And I have to say that currently in the world, we accumulated already huge experience, about 14,000 patients, and half of them are uh, patients from different clinical trials, and the other half are the patients who received this opportunity to be treated in the program of so-called early access or compassion program. And also we, we had this opportunity, and I will speak up about that later on. So this transversal impact, and we know very well there is plateau-like effect of epilimumab, of EP, that makes this molecule very interesting to apply because plateau-like effect had never ever been seen before using chemotherapy, using some other options. We think that plateau-like effect uh, would be with NTPD and other novel agents, possibly 
uh, plateau-like effect would be seen um, uh, B, uh, with B rough inhibitors, but here we are not quite confident. Now, speaking about our country and our personal experience, so very briefly, very briefly, we participated in very different clinical trials, uh, mainly in three, mainly in three, uh, specifically a trial where ipilimumab was used in adjuvant scenario for melanoma patients and high risk of metastasis. And also we have this experience of early access or extended access uh, to the drug, uh, compassion program. Me and a colleague of mine, Svetlana Pratsenko, and uh, one more St. Petersburg professional, uh, Georgi Manihas. This is the other institution. This is CC College, City Oncology Center. Uh, and uh, oncologists and oncology institution named by Petrov. So these are two institutions in St. Pete and one in Moscow. And all in all, totally, you see here, we included in our trial 240 patients plus those who got reinduction. And what is it? This is the following scenario. Uh, patients, uh, if they respond to ep epilimumab and later on um, this response is overlapped with other effects, uh, uh, the progression, then reinduction is possible. So uh, again, the treatment of epilimumab. So if you count with reinduction, so there will be even more patients. So what is important here in this particular slide that 85% of our patients are patients with skin melanoma. But not only, not only. We used it in patients with the uh, or ophthalmological form of melanoma and mucosal melanoma. Of course, the number of patients is limited uh, with other forms of melanoma. So I don't think that really there is sense to discuss it. But speaking about the efficacy, not to make this slide too complicated, I will show you. If um, we had progression in 63%, so totally the efficacy was 30 something, 35%, keeping in mind both stabilization and partial regression. Uh, well, incomplete, maybe not so many, but still we, we have even this, even this. And it was with uh, median of median of follow up um, 21 months and uh, response duration we had uh, median that nearly the same so very good result I think very good result almost two years almost two years and what is also important we tried to assess overall survival for this time and look here it appears to be 20 months and I have to say that if you look at the time periods and if you look at timing so up to two years we have 36 percent this is very good figure very good which really meets all that previous data that we know from other published uh, trials on sources speaking about toxicity profile let me skip that I would like to draw your attention to this slide because uh, of course Patients had some AEs, adverse events, and sometimes we know that adverse event, it's a demonstration of autoimmunity. And it is autoimmunity that allows this particular molecule to demonstrate itself as anti-tumor drug as well. And uh, according to this picture, we can see that those patients who had autoimmunity uh, that had a bit better survival curve, although definitely I cannot comment on that more than this. That is why our experience confirms and shows that we definitely confirm what is obvious to everyone. And it is very important to us that at last we registered Epilimumab in our country, and it is very important to get uh, new novel drugs as well from immune oncological classes. But we hope, we hope that it will happen one day. But now, that's enough, and thank you very much.